uh, Insomnia and they've been playing with Zandia at um, uh, ESL. So they've obviously not got as much synergy as they would compared to Shifter and Matty have been playing together for a long time and their champion pools are probably a lot more broad as well. Well, Pick a Ban is ready. Guys, I will allow you to take this one away and talk us through it. Well, Cho'Gath coming Cho'Gath, out. Yep. Yeah, that's not a gonna get Kerberos. Not, not going to let him have that. <laughs> Absolutely not. And they're probably going to be looking out, like we said, Thresh and Callista. And since Eminem are on the blue side, they might also look to take away the Rakan as well. That's yeah, you Adam, don't want to give over Rakan. Secondary choice, yeah. So yeah, there we go, the Thresh ban coming through. That likely gives Kane back to Candy Floss again. It's something that he has had a pretty good performance on. Yeah. Had a really big impact in the first game. Wasn't too bad in the second game, but you really, you know, you just saw how uh, far ahead, Ex Matty got on that yep. uh, that Zaya. He was really just crushing people. Paris as well on that Vladimir. Mm. Something that he's been playing quite often. I wonder if Eminem even consider that in their own ban strategy. Okay, Jung two junglers getting banned out now. Trying, almost trying to. That, that's probably why Candy Floss has been playing so much Kane because all of his comfortable jungle picks. We've seen him play the Gragas, the Juani, Jarvan getting taken away from him. So this has got to either be Callista or, or a Khan, but you would imagine Callista, because if Callista is a ban, Zandia's like, give me the yeah. AD carry that I can play. It's whether Singularity think that they can beat Callista on a Callista. Th if, if Thresh is gone, do they think that mm. Zandia and Callista is going to be that big of a deal? Right. So now they do have a choice of the Callista or the Rakan. So I think, I'm wondering if this was intended. I imagine they banned Zaya to say, if you don't take Rakan, we take Rakan. And yeah. he's going to give that over to Shifter. The Shifter is known for playing a little bit off meta in terms of that bot lane. He was playing Tom Kench beyond the point where Tom Kench was like being picked up mm. quite frequently. And he played that really well and during the regular season. Obviously, the Malphite coming through. You feel like you have to take Rakan here. Ooh. It's actually going to get through. If you give Rakan Callista yeah. over to, to Adam and Zandia... I think that's, that's just going to be a bit of a repeat of the first game, I feel. Yeah. They've got, like we said, those comfort picks on the bot lane, which has been the weaker side of Eminem. And allowing them this amount of comfort will probably allow them to pop off a bit more. Zach actually getting picked off right away, okay. I like that for Cesar, but Candy Floss now knows that Cesar mm. plays that Zach in a very sort of team fight orientated style. Yeah. I mean, Candy Floss could pick something super aggressive here and try and put pressure on, on Cesar in the jungle. You've played against Candy Floss. You know what he's like. Yeah. He loves to cheese. He loves to get into your jungle and be annoying. I'm actually wondering if he's more inclined to pick the uh, the Evelyn away here. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, Poppy actually picked up here, probably going over to Rifty. That's actually re a really, really good pick into the Zac. Yeah. Yeah, the Poppy W to stop the Zac engage is actually huge, and that will single-handedly negate most of the Zac engage. Most of the issues that was coming through last game was the fact that they didn't have anything to stop the Zac engage. Yeah. First game was a bit better because the Thresh Flay, if timed correctly, could stop it, but having nothing last game, they were a bit doomed. Big difference between the first series of the day and second series of the day. Corky getting let through time and time again mm. here. People would most most people would say Corky is literally tier one mid at the moment because mm. he has so many good matchups. A lot of other the other tier one mid laners were getting nerfed at this point. And Corky's still very, very strong. Mm -hmm. Going over energy, he's he's been a pretty a bit of a standout performer for Eminem in his own right across the, the sort of the weeks that we've seen him play. He's gifted Corky once more. No support pickup for Eminem though, which does mean that Singularity are going to get the opportunity to ban some supports out if they want to, to try and limit that ch uh, champion pool that Adam can take with, with the uh, Zandia's Callista. Nah, ban coming through. That's sort of suggesting that they'll want some sort of tanky top laner. Feels bad for Kerberos, though. Maybe they just give him the Renekton again. It's a good blind pick matchup if he wants it. They have the opportunity on red side to counter pick, though. Yeah. Okay, Kassadin also going away. Do you just ban Vladimir here? Do you just like take Paris off Vladimir, put him on something else? I mean, you could. He's shown a lot of competence with this Vladimir in the past two games. In the last game especially, he definitely popped off. Jace getting taken away, banned Rifty's over. Jace. Maybe they think, well, isn't the Poppy going top? Maybe yeah. they think it's like a Poppy flex of some sort. That, that's Actually, do you know what's is even more interesting? That they are banning top lane picks, knowing, seeing, that, seeing the Poppy here. This could very well be Adam playing Poppy support. It could even be Candy Floss taking Poppy, poppy jungle. jungle. Oh. Which would be very interesting yeah. if that is the case. Just trying to one-up their cheese pick from last game of the Malphite support. It is the Crazy Poppy jungle. Yeah, there's the Vladimir ban, yeah. yeah that, I mean, I think it's good to take Paris off something that mm -hmm. he's feeling comfortable on because it's now time to push Paris's champion pool, mm -hmm. make him play something that isn't as safe. Vladimir is a pretty safe mid lane pick. He can exit most ganks. He can sustain great team fight presence. But if you're looking for a safe mid laner with pretty much good matchups all round, Cinder is a good blind pick to take. Personally, I think I would have preferred the Orianna with such great ball delivery. Yeah. It would have actually been a even better Wombo than last game. But evidently, uh, it looks to be more comfortable on Syndra. It is that Poppy Shen. Flex pick. It is out. the Poppy Flex, yeah. With Shen coming through. I wonder where it's going to go. 
I'm imagining now that's Shen top for Rifty. Y yeah. But yeah, where is Poppy, where is Poppy gonna go? Is it gonna be Adam Poppy support, which we have seen at some high level games before? Nope. It's, oh, the Poppy jungle. It's the Poppy jungle for Candy yeah, Floss. Yeah. Oh. <sighs> Damn, they, re they really cannot be bothered with the Zac anymore, trying to get all sorts of disengaged for him. They got the Janna Monsoon, they got the Poppy W. Didn't know Adam was a professional ego. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Arden sends a first start and build complete. And now Singularity give Kerberos the opportunity for a counter pick, which is what they assume is going to be. I think most picks that do well into Shen do well into Poppy, so mm. you've, you've got a large breadth of um, champion pool because, like you said, could be a Shen jungle, we kind oh. of doubt it, but my goodness. Really? I did say, he has been playing a lot of Kane top, but I don't know, I think, I would have thought he would be more comfortable with the Camille, but no, actually right. locks in the Kane. Okay, let's see how this does. Kane picked every single game of this best of three series. What role does Kane take here? Is he going to be split push focused? Is there going to be a team fight presence for him? Is he going to go the assassin or the tank? <laughs> well, the thing is about Kane in this matchup, is that whenever Shen's going to be looking to ult away to try and uh, help assist on the opposite side of the map, <laughs> Kane is just going to be able to follow him, exactly. And he can save the TP, maybe have a 3v3 skirmish down bot lane and then teleport right back on top and continue the split push. You deliver a Kane directly yep. to the back line of your team. That's yep. pretty insane. Yeah. Would you say that Singularity have an advantage here, or do you think that the Kane pick mainly goes in Eminem's favor? I mean, you say it is actually one of the comfort picks. Realistically, he's been playing a lot of Kane. Who are you leaning towards here? Even though we hyped up Singularity's Kane pick, I just prefer the Eminem composition. There's you so think so? Many, yeah, uh, so many ways to shut down Cesar from even getting mm. into the fight. You don't have an engaged tool really apart from delivering Kane to the back line with Shen somehow. The problem is, for Singularity, how do they actually start a fight on their terms? Because as soon as uh, Cesar jumps in, blocked by Poppy, blocked by Janna, he's yeah. shut down immediately. There's no way to actually find the engage. I think an important thing that is going to be in this game is vision control. Yeah. He's going to have to control the sides uh, in the jungle of the mid lane. So when they start sieging mid lane, they're going to have to have heavy vision control on the sides. And Zach's just going to have to find the right angle where Janna is just not going to see him with the monsoon. And the Poppy is supposedly going to be grouped up with the team as well. Corky is the key pick for Eminem here. He's the only one that's going to scale ludicrously into the mm. late game. Corky late game damage is just pretty insane. So yep. Corky for me, energy, it, lots of protection for him in the late game. He can single-handedly carry if he gets the right opportunity. There's so many ways to prevent people getting onto him. There'll be the mid-game prowess of the, 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 the Callista coming through. And Callista does scale okay, but she's not the best late game scaling AD carry. But you do have energy to back up this late game. It's, I think it'll be tough. It's going to be close. Yeah. Certainly going to be a close one and a very interesting one as well. Remember, this is a place for the grand final here in the Autumn Premiership Finals. I think we're just about ready to get into this game. So it's about time that we jump back on over to our casters, who I'm sure are very excited to get this one underway. Guys, take it away. We couldn't have thought this would have got any more crazy, but it did. We get ourselves Kerberos getting himself the cane in the top lane, and Candy Floss is going to be on that poppy as they are tied one apiece. Winner of this will go through to the finals. Loser walks away with their head held low as we load through into the last game of the day. It kind of feels like they decided after the second game, <laughs> pistols at dawn. We're both going to redraw exactly what it is that we're playing with here. So much has been mixed around, yet there's some familiarity in terms of the pick. Zarnia back on the Callista, Cesar on his Zach, as always, energy on the Corky. But otherwise, things are getting a bit mixed up here. And this is what makes for a really exciting third and final game, is that there's no kind of predictability in terms of saying, we've already seen this today. This is how we expect it to go. The Syndra being a total change around. And the Kane in the top lane, that's going to be so exciting to watch. I'm going to make a prediction for you right now. Well then. They're going to go in on Zandia. Adam's going to press E, and Zandia is not going to die because Janna is the most obnoxious support to play into. She is very safe, but the hard engage is also a pretty good counter to that as well. And you've got both the Zac coming in from long range, and you've got the Alistair. Always one to watch out for. Yes, it means Zandia's been pretty safe, I think, at least early on, but the team fights is always going to be a concern. Team fights will definitely be a concern. I am super excited to see. Our matchup of the day, Kerberos versus Rifty. Kerberos playing as Kane, which was hinted at the beginning of the day on the analyst desk. I really want to know what he chooses to go for here as well. I imagine he goes towards Rasp, purely because it's against the Shen, and you'll have Candy Floss going for the ganks. He won't really have a chance to get the Shadow Assassin stacks coming through from Energy or Zarnia, because he shouldn't be getting anywhere near them anytime soon. Another player I really want to keep my eyes on, actually, is Paris here. Paris played... We, we had questions, because we'd only ever seen him play two games, and we saw him play Karma, and we saw him play Victor prior to that. Then he spammed Victor for two games in a row. One game, he had 
a pretty bad performance. Second game, he really came up big for Singularity there. And now he's actually changed that up and he's switched onto the Syndra. I actually really like the Syndra in this particular matchup. So I can't wait to see actually how he's going to perform today, it, well, in this last match. I really, really like the Candy Boss as well on the Poppy. Like, we don't really get much chance to discuss this during the um, draft phase, but that's a bit of a mix up. We see it every now and then. I think we've seen it probably like twice that I can recall seeing the Poppy in the jungle in the current iteration. Back with when she was like ridiculous, you know, percent health damage on a Q, stuff like that. It was a little bit more obnoxious when she was playing in the jungle, but nowadays. It's all about going for those ganks, and of course, having the charge does mean you have some pretty reliable CC, especially in the lanes where there's a number of walls around. I'm thinking like mid lane, for example. There is a lot of places they can use a gank, but unfortunately, he will have to be able to try and charge into a scatter of the week, but Paris can just send him flying away. Although, one of the good things is if Cezic tries to come in as a counter gank, the steadfast presence will be pretty obnoxious. Now, Paris actually oh. getting engaged into scatter of the week comes down. Paris trades pretty equally there with energy. So at least he's got that in his favor. Didn't blow a summon a spell either. The slow that comes through from red buff and also from the Q, from the poppy, just makes it so anyone with any kind of damage can really start laying that down. And I think if he gets himself involved in this bot lane, they've got a good amount of damage here. He's quite happily trading into the explosive charge. Definitely, indeed. Look at that. The shield comes through, gives the attack damage steroid to Zandia, but here comes Cesar. He's looking for the opening, got those stretching strikes as he bots the pair of them together. Adam running really, really low, but Cesar needs to be careful because Rend can get pulled out. That oh, would be cell it. division pop. Now they need to be extremely careful as Matty might be able to turn this. Is Zandia going to commit to the kill? Looks like that won't be the plan for m and and they're just going to peel away now. Yeah, well, he did only have about a amount of left for one more. Uh, e, I think, there potentially. Otherwise, he would have probably gone in and tried to go for it there. Being able to get that out that early just from some rends. We saw it in the last game, actually, where Paris, sorry, in the first game, where Paris underestimated how many stacks he had um, currently buried into him. And got himself picked off pretty quickly and pretty easily, to be honest. Maybe underestimating the capabilities of Zandia when he does have, as Excandra alluded to, his favorite AD carry. Candy Floss has been a very active jungler on this poppy jungle. He's been mid, he's now been top. Tried to pressure Kerberos out a little bit more. Oh. Now, once again, Matty trading in with Zandia, but look, the rend could be enough for the kill. The flash is oh. burst out, and first blood comes through to Adam. Now, Shifter has to run away as they're chasing him down. He's going to be able to get his way out of there. That was pretty close. And there's a scoundrel to Spain. The Eagle gets first blood here on the Janna. It was a bit of a surprising follow through, to be fair, as the also that followed through and managed to pick Matty off in the end. But this is the last thing they want. We saw what happened in the first game when they gave the early advantage over to Zandia. He started running away with the game. And to be honest with you, yes, you might have first capabilities coming out of Paris. But that involves him getting actually close to Zandia in the first place. And if he is that close, there's going to be a Candy Floss. There's going to be a Rift Heal coming down. Energy has been laying down a lot of damage as well. And there's also the shields coming through from Adam to consider. There are so many tools. They keep Zandia safe here. They're giving him these kills and advantages early on. It's the worst idea. Well, it looks like this time, actually, they're going to look to turn it onto Adam. No shield, no attack speed buff for him as Matty manages to get the kill. But Zandia now looking to turn it one more time, but he's fighting in the minions. And Matty might go forward for the double kill. Is the rent going to be enough? Absolutely not. Matty gets a double kill on the Tristana. <laughs> All I've just said is become undone. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter what kind of advantage you have, but Zandia here going against towards the Berserker's Grease. I would have expected maybe to go towards the Cole once more. Yes, it's not as comfy a matchup as it was before, but it worked out so well for him previously. And he's now going to deal with Kerb, who's taking quite a lot of damage there underneath this tower. Kerberos gets the Blast Plant out. A Shadow steps his way away as well, and Candy Floss turns up going, where is that man? I don't actually know, what is, what is Kane? I haven't read his lore. He is... I think he's a member of the Shadow Assassins. He wants to become like Zed or more powerful or something. So an Edge Lord. So he can either turn into it, yeah, basically. He can either turn into a Shadow Assassin, where he becomes like a true assassin, or he becomes Rask because the weapon overtakes him. That's pretty cool. It's a typical fantasy character who desires more power, basically. It's all you need to know. Okay, cool. Yeah, he's pretty standard. Rocks his fedora. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, apparently, that's not a replay. Um, <laughs> For a minute, that caught me off guard. You're like, this, this isn't a replay. What are you talking about? <laughs> but let's look at these bot lane items as well. Pickaxe currently going in favor of Matty. And on the other side of Zandi, he got himself two of those daggers. Naturally going towards the Runar's Hurricane first. It's a great item for him to brush here on the Callista. And one thing I didn't really pick up on was that he's gone for the barrier. And Adam himself has gone for the heals. They've not gone for exhaust. They're not too worried about Matty or Paris. 
then brought us a lot more worried about everything else. And now we actually get Ooh, a replay. This was, kind of, this was kind of overextension in my eyes where he was... They, when they came back to lane, they knew they would be on full health, but they were just trying to force this wave into the tower. And this is what concerns me with both of these teams. And rightly when it's Scoundrel said, XL looks not so much to me an inch above the rest of the team, but several inches above them. Purely on the basis that they're not making these really silly mistakes. It's like... The early engagement from Matty that led to um, Shifter losing his life. The case there where Zandu and Adam stayed around for too long. These are really amateur basic mistakes that you will see in solo queue. It's not the kind of thing you want to see from a team that's supposed to be competing to go towards um, C CSQ. I think in the current situation, uh, the current state they're playing in, neither of these teams really will have much success there. They need to really start feeling that this acts to stop making these silly mistakes. Well, no, 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 do answer back on the turret there. So they get themselves the turret, unfortunately for them. Singularity did get first turret blood, and that was in that top lane. And where's the focus going to be? Turrets are now going to drop what we typically see at this point from both of these teams. For if the series is anything to go from, the ADCs will swap lanes. And I see exactly that is what has happened because you see the Tristana and the Alistair down in the bot lane for Singularity. They've also got Cesar hanging around over that wall, so if he wants to elastic clean shot in, he can. Yeah, probably not worth it though, because this is another nice thing about Adam on the Janna is that you can use the Howling Gale to keep a Zac away. You can interrupt his dive. You have your ultimate for exactly the same thing. So many tools essentially to stop him being a pain, and that's also why they picked the Poppy. So really, says uh, I don't expect him to have the mega engages we've seen so far. It worked brilliantly with the Malphite. They don't have that capability this time around. They've got to deal a lot more with Cesar and rely on him to be their main source of engage, or at least get a pick with Paris. Well, as we approach the 10 minute mark, Eminem are marginally up in gold. If I marginally, I mean 300 gold. Probably one of the closest games we've had so far of the series. Normally one team is starting to take off by this point, but it looks pretty equal this time. And how does that work out for the teams as we move later on into the series? Well, into the game, so as you could say, the series is almost yeah, over. Sorry. <laughs> you know what I mean. Both teams have got really nice late game comps, I think. Probably more so again for Eminem. Uh, Syndra is great, obviously, for the burst in the late game, but again, there's so many shields. There's the ult, the Shen, the Janna, so on and so forth, to keep her target alive. And it's the same thing we've been saying about Eminem all series. You can see the pattern beginning to emerge. They've got double carry, they've got energy, and they've got Zandia both playing range carries. In the late game, that favors them a lot more. Yes, they've got some pretty good seeds, and they've got some good catch on the side of Singularity. I just don't think it stacks up against Eminem's comp here. Let's see if it does stack up against Eminem's comp indeed. Or not. As we see Shifter and Matty looking for an opening onto energy. Shifter does have ultimate, so if he wants to tower dive, he has that added extra bit of tankiness. The free man unit is now going to put that Satra charge on and start to siege onto this mid lane, just pressuring it down a little bit, helping Paris out as much as possible as he was really one of the major kind of key factors that helped them win last game. While he was playing that Vladimir, he was just unkillable. But it's more use, really. When you know that the enemy team is setting up a freeze to get a slow push going towards your tower, you can afford to roam elsewhere and do things like that. Force the mid laner away, get a gank down, get some damage down onto him, get some onto the tower in best case scenario, and then return back to bot lane. And you lose maybe one or two minions. But overall, for the damage your team gets down onto that objective, it's 100% worth it. Couple of items starting to come through. Hex Finger finished up by energy. Paris has got that lost chapter. Slowly working towards that Morello Nomicon. The counter push. There's four members here and no one's here to defend. You've got Tristan in the bottom again. Sintra's still coming back. Says it's coming in. He's looking for the opening. Let's bounce his forward. The scatter of the week only catches onto one as the monsoon is thrown down. Says it needs to be a little bit careful as he is ignited. Rifty even used the ultimate to enter the fray. Now Shifter's here with the backup of the rest of the team. Turret didn't actually go too low there. And all it's done is really buy Kerberos a little bit of time to farm up. He is still down to Rifty, though. He's been behind for quite a while. And in fact, literally two minutes ago, we sat at 53 CS while we saw Energy approaching 105, I think it was. I don't understand how he's managed to lose so much farm here because, yes, the tower's gone down this side, so he should have got some farm from that. And he's constantly been pushed in by Rifty as well, quite surprisingly. And I just feel if he, finds, if he keeps falling behind in gold, we'll see what we saw in previous games where, realistically, he doesn't have much impact. He said it at the very start of the series, he said it at the start of the day. It's all about the top laners and what impact they can have elsewhere. And although Rifty has been stuck on these tanks, he still managed to make a pretty profound impact with that Maokai in certain situations. This time around, he's got the Shen. He's got that ultimate to use to keep it up. He's on your life. Um, big wow, Okay, That was a very big commitment indeed. Through the flash out, Cesar entered in. But they're not going to be able to find anything. And Energy was supposed to flash, but he did gain two flashes for it. So I think he'll be pretty happy with that. This is where it's really nice playing Corky in the mid lane. Because you can go that Hex Drinker first item and deal with any AP assassins or mages that are going to be a nuisance to you. 
If someone like Ziggs, for example, maybe it's a bit tougher because you would be taking consistent poke. But with Syndra, who relies on that one combo to really try and burst you down, there's just no way it happens. You have the Hex Drinker pass and kiss it and kick it if you really need it. And in that case, he didn't. He managed to survive it just flat out. He did not do enough damage yet because he hasn't got the required items, Paris that is, to really start making an impact onto these enemy carries. Now, let's see what the next Drake is. It's actually going to be the Ocean Drake, first Drake of the game. Singularity are going to start it off as says is there to back up his bot lane shifter and Matty. Well, maybe a strong Rift is hanging about. Kerberos is recalling and has teleport available, so if something does decide to break out, which it doesn't look like it will, he is able to enter in. But the problem with them getting this Ocean Drake now is look at where the other bot lane is for the side of Eminem. Xandir and Adam are in that top side, and it looks like that's where they want to be pressuring. They go for the lane swap, sending their bot lane up to the top. Kerberos once again matching off against that Shen in the bottom lane. He's now got the Black Cleaver finished as well, so at least should have a bit of a better time against Rifty. Although equally, he's now finished off the Titanic Hydra, so the first big item spikes, in a sense, coming through for both of these top laners here. I think this turret actually might go down. They've got three members strong. That's still a big wave here. Shifter's actually gone in looking for an opening, but he's going to get headbutted into the wall by the Poppy. The rend could come out. It could wreck him. Looks like it's not going to be the case as Zandia and the rest of the team are going to peel away. Paris was hanging about, did have Ghost if he wanted to speed up into that lane. But that was a big chunk of damage coming out from the MLM bot lane. And considering we're completely tied at gold at 15 minutes, this could be really, really detrimental if you start to lose towers, start to lose pressure on the map. And it looks like Eminem is definitely Cesar. looking to go for that. So this is hanging about. Remember, the Steadfast Presence will stop that. Stretching Strikes goes a little bit wide. The engage for the side of Singularity is my concern. Candy Floss can counter all of the engage they have in this bot lane at the moment. He definitely can, and keep an eye on the mid laners as well because they do keep on roaming up, and Energy is now the one making the move ahead of Paris, who's still sat here in this mid lane. Rifty has his ultimate available with a recall. Has it available to use if they try to go for the big play here? Although it feels like a risk, and we've seen Singularity this in the last game, where they start making big, greedy plays that they don't strictly need to make while they're ahead. Here comes the Elastic Finish, not going to get knocked out by the Tornado as Candy Floss headbutts into the wall, knocks Cesar up, Monsoon Bunk comes through as well, just to keep everyone topped up and alive in the fight. No one else is here to respond, so this looks like the turret will go down for Eminem. What will follow though, that is the question. Zandia going forward, landing so many spears, landing the slow, the heal comes out of Matty, and they're trading forward, but the stretching strikes come down. Here's the ultimate from the Shen, as they're gonna get bombed oh. up and just wrecked. Let's bounce, delivers Candy Floss in. He's forced to flash away. Auto attack comes down, and it's a double kill for the Tristana. Adam's on the run, Kerberos can't find anything. He did use his TP but didn't gain anything from it. That was a beautiful ultimate coming out of Cesar there as well to bounce away at the right time and just keep Zandia pinned down and CC. We saw this in the last game, albeit with a different comp, it was the same outcome. It didn't matter that Candy Boss was there with the said fast presence. They still managed to get all the CC they needed onto Zandia to find him dropping down. And it's looking very, very scary if you're against X Matty right now. He's 4 1 and 0, holds all of his team's kills. Already, as we sort of said earlier on, we did not want to see the same repeat. Well, they didn't want to see the repeat in the first game. But Zandia was just running away with the game, but that was not going to be the case. Rifty. Unleash power. Oh, so low. Wow. Rifty must have got out. I didn't see the exact health there, but I think it must have been about 20 or 30 health. Herald is going to get picked up on the side of Singularity as well, and this time the attention from them is going to be onto this mid lane. Syndra's wave clear is a lot stronger than Tristana's, but it looks like it's not enough. The threat of four members is just going to push are away, but Cesar wants to make something happen. Coming in, actually, it's just gonna go away with that. Kerberos was on the other flank. And where are they gonna use this Herald? I hope not mid lane, to be honest, purely because that turret is very low. <laughs> they could just force down this tower and then put and then use the Herald for the second, or they could take it into the bot lane and try and force it here. But bearing in mind Cesar is the one with it, sending it down to the bot side, bot side of the map when there's nothing really around there to fight for feels a little bit of a waste of time. Trying to get that mid and top lane control once Baron is on the cards is definitely going to be their biggest concern. And you can already see how much attention they're giving to that side of the map. Look at the wards down around the Baron pit inside the blue jungle of Eminem. They just want to make sure they've got an eye on everything going on. If they can take the towers down, they can solidify that stronghold even further. This is what we've seen out of Eminem throughout this series. I feel that Singularity definitely have had stronger team fighting than Eminem, but Eminem have definitely had better shot calling and understanding of when to rotate and how to rotate. And Kerberos just hasn't doesn't feel like he's done anything on this cane. This cane was so hyped up at the beginning of the day, it was always a potential threat. 
and then he just hasn't really utilized it. He's managed to get his hands on it in this last game. Got that cleaver finished, but he has nothing else to boot. I mean, let's bear in mind, he's coming up against a tank here. He's got Bramble Vest, and he's historically a very, very safe champion to play. Your main impact is coming down to team fights. Really hasn't managed to do. He did get the alarm down to Zandia last time round, but the damage was just too great from Singularity and couldn't even get there in time. For Kerberos, it's more about getting some farm, getting himself into the RAS form, and then appearing in these team fights as a massive CC heavy tank and just making himself known, I feel. He doesn't need to be crushing this lane against the Shen. He's just a lot more interested about what happens when he finally gets himself um, into a team fight. And further ahead than what we've seen in Jungle Kane so far, because Candy Cross has played it twice, done well with it. But obviously, when you're in a lane, you get more XP, you get more gold, and you have much greater impact when you start team fighting. Well, the pings from the side of Singularity is bot lane, and that looks like well, that's where the cool will be. The members are slowly coming through Kerberos. I'm going to fight with Rifty, but not a fight he really wants to take. Shadow Step will give him a little bit of health back. There's also a Honey Fruit if he wants to stick around for a little bit longer, but it looks like the idea for him is not going to be that, because Drake will be spawning in 30 seconds and doesn't want to take the, rift, the risk of dying, especially when he doesn't have Teleport, and Rifty has Stan United and Teleport available to him. You have to consider exactly that, that the TP and the ultimate's available for Rifty. Kerberos has got, well, nothing really. So he needs to get himself down to this Drake now and be ready to fight. The problem is, of course, Gem will just keep on pushing up in the top lane here and might find themselves with the free tower. It is an infernal Drake as well. That Herald does not have too much long, so let's see where Harriet gets used from Cesar. Feels like maybe he's a little bit more interested in getting that Infernal Drake, but what he could do is throw it down in the mid lane. It looks like instead he's just going to get picked apart. He's already forced into Blob Spawn. Kerberos is entering into the phrase. He's going to get knocked back. Shifter lands onto two people, but it's Genevieve Cesar who falls down. And now Shifter will be soon to follow as Eminem are tracing through. The rent comes down, but Energy gets a double kill. And Infernal Drake is all but free for Eminem now. This is a real head scratching moment because Cesar, we've said it so, several times so far has made very few mistakes in this series, but this is one of the large ones. You cannot afford to be giving away an Infernal Drake like that. Half of your team are still in the base, and you're going into the midst of the enemy team trying to see what you can find. Bearing in mind, like you said, he had the Rift Herald as well, does still have it in his back pocket. He should have used it as a distraction tool. He could drop it here in the base when he spawns if he needs to, based on the amount of time that they've got, and just let it crawl down a lane, but... Either way, like you say, would have been much more sensible. Drop it in a lane and then go and focus on Drake. Sure enough, there he is summoning it into the bot lane. Hello. Let's go against the Shen. Going to throw it into the Shen lane, so it'll just slow down Shen's split push, but that is all it's going to do. So, a Rift Herald ended up not gaining the side of Singularity anything at this point. Going to have to match up against Harold. Harriet, I think that's what it's called in a for Harriet. a while. But this is now wasted, because it's never going to hit a tower. It's going to sit here and just needlessly beat away on Shen without ever actually achieving anything. Kerberos has now arrived to support it, but with the damage it's taken so far, its tower impact is going to be so minimal. It just slowed Shen down. That's all it did at the end of the day, yep. which unfortunately is something I thought Kerberos should be doing already himself. Now in his Rast form. Not the case, but yes, he is in his Rast form this time. He's going in onto Rift, actually, looking for an opening, looking for the damage. Spirit's Refuge will block some of those auto attacks from Kerberos. So Kerberos needs to be a little bit careful, but the knocker comes down. He's now starting to trade more and more forward. Humble Trespass is still available, remember, so he can go for it. That is actually depressing. Embarrassing. That is <laughs> depressing to watch a Rift Hell do so little damage. At least it hit the tower. At least it hit the tower. They're still trading out here. Rifty yeah, actually looking for it. Whoa. There's going to be the Humble Look Trespass. Waiting for the last moment possible. Knockout comes down. Looking for a little bit more damage. But Rift can turn this if he needs to. Has Flash. Has Taunt. Will he commit for the fight? Will he commit for the kill? He oh, missed, he missed it. it! That was so unfortunate! Now Kerberos forced to Flash away. He's going to get his way out of there. Cezzle was hanging around. Not going to commit for the kill, but... Whoa! He just, he just went sliding away. So he slipped on a banana. It's like he fooled himself there with that. Like, that's the one combo of Shen you should never, ever miss. That would have been a guaranteed kill if he got away with that as well, because he would have been able to keep up with Kerberos whilst he ran. But instead, completely missed it, and Kerberos walks away scot-free. Doesn't have to worry about a thing. Both of them now without Flash, but both with Teleport to join on the next fight where necessary. This game's definitely slower than anything we've seen in this series completely. Very even as well. Very even indeed. It's all to play for. Singularity have an Ocean Drake and Eminem have an Infernal Drake. So arguably Eminem winning that front. A little bit more damage as we slowly start to scale later and later. When does this Kalista stop being so much of a threat? You're looking at much later on, really. Um, I think it was actually earlier on Scudsy or I think it was Frozen Dawn that mentioned it, maybe. 
was that she only has 90% of her AD stats onto her auto attack. So later on in the game, she doesn't have that full late game impact like most carries do. Tristana are a great example of such a carry. But we'll still have the utility, I feel, I feel the ability to get the stacks on there, the ability to ult add, into the, add them into the team if he needs to. They have a lot of control, I think, in team fights, especially with Candy Floss and Rifty also on side. It's just a case of how does it stack up against someone like Matty in Paris. Like, Paris will be able to burst someone out. Depends where the top, where are the shields committed? Do they throw them onto Zandia? Onto Energy? Who is it that they concern themselves with here, Eminem? Because I don't think you can afford to keep both carries alive in these team fights. Kerberos having a hard time against Rifty. Trades are pretty equal. Has got the knock up and actually this time starting to win. Spirits Refuge is there, so it will buy him a little bit of time. Umbul Trespass is available again to Kerberos, so he can get a bit of health back if he needs to. Also has that Vampire Acceptor, so Lifesteal is available as well. Let's have a look at what's going to be happening on the other side of the map as they're starting to push into this mid lane for Eminem. Slowly clawing a slight gold lead, but that's only because they've got one tower extra over Singularity. Still waiting for a big kind of fight to kick off in this game as well. Four and four at 25 minutes in. This is a very, very slow Contrast game. Boss. Ooh, Rift actually Spot. has taunt. It can go a little bit further, but there's going to be the damage. It looks like Kerberos might be able to take oh, it. No, the taunt comes down. Kerberos goes down and Rift finds the kill. That should never happen. That, this is another example of what we were speaking about earlier on. Over aggression, going for kills you don't need to force. Kerberos was so desperate to get an advantage. And it just did not pay off for him at all. Now they find themselves without him in that split push capacity for 30 seconds. This has got to be the time, surely, where Eminem is screaming, what objective can we take here? Can we go for Baron? Can we force another tower? We have everything on our side, and they're missing Kerberos. And sure enough, here comes the TP. Well, that's going to be the TP. It's Corkery. Valkyries into the back. Paris unleashes power, but it's just not going to do any damage at this point. As Matty running exceptionally low, forced to flash away. The headbutt comes out from Candy Floss, trying to look to headbutt the cow. But it looks like the tower is going to be the pressure point for the side of MM. Kerberos is now alive, but Paris is dead. It's 5v4. That's all it takes. I can say that small advantage is enough to say, right, what can we get? What objective can we take? And the answer is a kill and the tower. Maybe some more. Yeah, it looks like Cesar threw his ultimate out, but the rend will pop him into that cell division. And it looks like the rest of MM are going for the kill aggressively forward as the headbutt comes out, but the teleport from Kerberos yeah, will dead. keep Cesar alive, but it doesn't do anything because it's a double kill coming through for Zandia. Matty forced on the run, and the tower will fall at 25 minutes. And Eminem are looking to pressure, looking to end, and looking to go towards the finals. They're going to peel away now because Paris is alive, and they need to play safe. Be very, very risky when you know on your both of your tanks realistically are very, very low. Trying to stick around for that fight, but at least they can settle with the Drake, and they got much more from that than they bargained for. And this is Singularity making more of the same mistakes we saw in the first game. Just committing a little too heavily to a defense or going too hard for a tower dive. And it's costing them. They were in 4v5s two or three times there. And Eminem capitalized exactly the way they should have. And now they find themselves with an infernal break. Not what I expected after the last game from Singularity. I expected so much more. But Eminem definitely coming up big. And they've now got themselves that no second way. infernal Drake. But we can have a sneaky, sneaky Baron here. There's no wards. Eminem. They can't do Realistically, this can't guess this is going to happen, can they? They're they slowly working this. towards it. Baron's on half health, and it looks like the side of Eminem are going to come in. I think we're going to have a fight on our hands as Paris already running on half health, under half health. Baron Nash is going to get very, very low here. Who's going to get it? It's going to be Synergy. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Cesar. Cesar. Cesar manages to find it, but Kerberos pinned in the base. He goes down. Zandia finds the kill. They lose one, but do game Baron. I gotta say, I'm really impressed. I did not think in a million years it'd ever be able to pull that one off. I always thought Candy Floss would be able to get there and at least interrupt it and maybe pick off one or two members, maybe get the Baron over. But they only walk away with Kerberos, who's still 0 and 3. He has just finished off the death stance, though, so he's in a position where he can split push pretty effectively against this Shen, who thus far has given him quite a lot of trouble. Singularity must be very, very happy with that call, actually. We're going to have a little, a little look at the replay. Maybe you can see this. It's just a positional kind of thing more than anything else. And I thought they might pick up another couple more kills than this, but nope, just go rock left in the pit. Everyone else managed to make a clean escape. They do walk away with a Baron. So at least it's something for Singularity. They're still finding themselves just shy of 4,000 gold down, but it's a small advantage. I'm pretty sure they'll be happy to have than to not have. Feels like Kerberos has just kind of been that sacrificial lamb all series long. Yeah. His job's just to be annoying and die for his team. And he's did a very good job of it, to be fair. When you're on the Renekton, he was a real nuisance. And now, with this inhibitor dropped, 
and the Baron buff in favor of Singularity means they can stall and just wait for that scaling to come online a little bit longer for them. I mean, let's not forget, about 15 minutes ago, we said Matty is 4-0. He is all the team's kills. In fact, he was 4-1-0. and zero. In that time, Kerberos has died a couple of times, Cesaros as well. And it feels like Eminem have slowly started carving away control from Singularity. Yes, Kerberos has started getting a bit of an advantage in these side lanes. And yes, the late game is going to look even scarier once Paris and Matty start getting their couple of big items that they really need to come online. But for Eminem, they've still got energy, who, to be fair to him, has looked pretty much flawless all series. 2-0-4 at the minute on this Corkin. He's showing no signs of slowing down. And Zandia is 5-2-3 and three on his favourite AD carry. This is going just the way Eminem want, I feel. But Singularity, they're not giving up just yet. They know there's still a chance in them for this to pull, uh, pull it back and potentially snatch it away from Eminem, who thus far have looked pretty dominant. I've seen this before. Kovaros definitely needs to play with tempered aggression this time, but looking to trade, has that Death Dancer this time actually doing pretty well into the trade into Rifty, finds himself a nice little knock-up. This time is smart enough to walk away with the favorable trade. It's a very, like I say, earlier on we said it was a very slow game. It still feels quite slow despite the recent action that's kind of kicked off with the whole inhibitor going down. Since then, it's shrunk back to what it was before. No one really trying to make any big daring moves except maybe for Kerberos trying to dive the Shen in the tower. Never quite the smartest choice. That was um, that was a kind of symphony of hilarious misplays. Rifty missing the taunt. Speaking of taunts, he actually lands it this time onto Kerberos. Kerberos actually now is the one who's starting to run a little bit lower and is forced to run away from the Shen. Shen's actually gone forward with the taunt. And look at Matty. Three members hanging around. That actually makes that four because Corky's there as well. Matty needs to be a little bit careful. Has got the Energizer build and whoa, Adam. You said it, he's got the Energizer belt. Infinity Edge is in finished, and same up with the double Energizers. Got that Rapid Fire Cannon and that Static Shiv. It's the mana that's currently Kerberos' issue, I feel. The longer he sits in this lane and tries to trade, now that Rifty can sustain most of it, he finds himself going back sooner than Rifty does. Although, equally, he's not going back as well. He's got TP, he's got the ultimate. He's ready to make an impact somewhere. And for Eminem, this is the issue we spoke about last game. It's about applying the pressure. When you have a small advantage, how can you turn that into a much larger lead? And so far, it's been very slow, very stable, very calm, not wanting to try and take any risks, which we completely understand. We've already seen them lose a Barret. Next time, it could be something much, much greater. Oh, like you said, it's definitely slower. Hit the 30 minute mark and Eminem are in favor of the gold. They've got five towers to two and the inhibitor in the mid lane has now respawned. Paris is gonna go clear out the last of the super minions and push that in. Kerberos hanging around on the other side of the map. Oh, sorry, the other side of the wall, looking for an opening. Yeah, but look at Rifty, still in the bot lane. He's got that split push on the go. Kerberos needs to be here if they're gonna force a fight. The question is, do they force one or not? They've now got the inhibitor back up, so they can afford to be a little more aggressive, a bit more confident, I suppose you could say, in how far out they sit. They lose that inhibitor again, and they're going to have to leave Paris in the mid lane once more, as they have had to just do to deal with the, uh, sp um, the super minions that were coming through. I was like, split push is not quite a split push, is it? It is more of a minion push. But when do they pull the trigger? When, when do Singularity recognize that they can go in? Because at all points, they've got to have the fact that Rifty can stand United into the fight at any moment. Tower's going low, and now we're going to have a little bit of a fight. The headbutt comes down from Candy Floss onto Cesar. A stun goes a little bit wide, and it's going to force a couple of M&M away. Health bar's running a little bit low, though. There's a good scatter of the week coming down. Looks like they're going to provide a little bit more damage, but Redemption's there, so they're all healed up. On the other side of the wall, Cesar hanging around a little bit, but Rifty and Kerberos are in that mid lane. They're going, to leave. They're going to see the tower now. They've left it alone to just go down. That's Great coming up in tower. 10 seconds as well, but that tower, the tower's just gone for free here. I think they've realized they were stretching themselves a little bit th too thin, trying to deal with the split push in the bot lane from Rifty, the minions in the mid lane, and then the top lane pressure. They were just losing too much. A massive risk here, though, of death. Oh, yeah. what an ultimate! Looks like they're going to go a little bit further forward, and now they're tracing down onto Candy Floss, but he is just one speedy little yordle. Kerberos is coming in, misses the, the knock-up, sorry, and that's going to be the end of Adam as he is deleted. Matty hops over the wall, looking onto Candy Floss and Rifty running low, the satchel charge. One more auto attack, <laughs> but that stand United is huge at this point. Rifty looking for an opening, looking for the stun, the taunt onto multiple members, but Paris makes sure that doesn't happen, gets the kill, and Singularity come up huge in the team fight. Well, you give them a finger, they'll take the whole arm if you're not careful, and that's exactly what they've just done.
And it looks so good at first for Eminem because they were trying to take on that top lane inhibitor. They already have the open inhibitor in the mid lane. You would think the control and the power is entirely in their hands. Then they give it all away in a flash. Just from that one catch coming through. Kerberos with a great TP behind them, mind you, worked absolute wonders for them. What still baffles me is that Singularity have yet to take a single bot lane tower. They both still stand. And realistically, with a split push coming through from Kerberos, you would think they'd got at least one or two. Paris literally just pressed R and deleted. <laughs> That's all it, it was takes, just right? Outplay button. They're going to get himself a Mountain Drake as well. So Singularity get this turnaround. The gold is now equal again. They've got the Mountain Drake. They even took a tower in that mid lane. And that bot lane tower, like you said, hasn't actually been under, like, hasn't fallen yet. But Kerberos was pressuring it and pushing minions into it. So it is actually relatively low. So if they just send one member down there, they can take it. But the threat is that Baron is up on the other side of the map. So Eminem aware of this, and they know that they can just send Rifty there. He has Stan United in a little bit, but he also has Teleport, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, and it's interesting for Zandia there. We spoke quite a lot about the shields that are available to keep him alive from threats like that from Paris, but Paris didn't care. He just pulled the trigger, probably aware that the shield was on cooldown from Adam, that Rifty would not be able to get there because he was preoccupied in the mid lane with Kerberos. And once your AD carry is gone, you're relying on Corky exclusively for the damage there. Shen, Poppy, Janna, not really what you think of when you think of high damage off tanks or anything along those lines. You are literally relying on those two damage dealers. When one goes, your team loses half of its damage, if not more, because it's Kalista. Right, Kerberos has picked up that GA, so he's going to be even more of a nuisance, because like I said, Kerberos' job is to be an annoying nuisance with dies. Now he's a new annoying nuisance you have to kill twice. <laughs> and his sustain is pretty big now that he's got that Death Dance done and the Umbreal Trespass. As we do see on the other side of the map, Rifty is pushing in on that share and forcing minions after minions into that tower. But Cesar and Matty just snuck over the back and looking for Baron. They've got a pink ward down. And actually, Eminem are just not aware of it. They've thrown out the ward, so they're going to see it now, but it's too late. Singularity get themselves two Nashes this game. That's just one thing. It's insane, really, that they knew Kerberos was sitting there just holding the front line. They must have thought to themselves, where are Cesar and Matty right now? Hmm, what could a tank and a hyper carry be doing, quite possibly, at 35 minutes into the game? I wonder. And they finally find out the hard way. This is indeed just taking that Baron away. And there's no tower being taken because Rifty wasn't quite sure whether to commit or not. And now it's Singularity's time to commit to this counter push. For the first time in this game, they're finding themselves ahead in gold. Definitely behind on towers, mind you. So still a lot of standing gold available. They're the ones with the power. I'm curious to see if Paris can catch out Zandia once again, because if they do that, they can just end this game in one push. Well, that's the point. There's lots of standing gold available for the side of Singularity. So now they're ahead in gold. Only by 800 gold will be it. This is about to make that gold lead larger. And look at that bot lane. They can go to there if they want to go to. They can go push in the top lane if they want. I think the bot lane is definitely the optimal choice for them here. And that gold lead is going to slowly start to go wider and wider apart. And Eminem have to start questioning what do they do? Because, like we said, Tristana will outscale that Callista. Size of the sack as well. He's a big blob man in All the HP. <laughs> Got himself the iron pot as well. All that gold being unlocked now will put them at a two and a half thousand advantage. And equally, don't forget, Kerberos has only got his CP back up. They can send him back to the top lane here and just say, right, stay up there until you have a tower or until we tell you to come and join the fight. Adaptive Helm has been finished on Rifty there, so... <laughs> I'm somewhat confused by this because... <laughs> that's, that's just for Paris' ultimate. Yeah, realistically, Paris isn't going to ult either of those targets. He's no. going to look more towards Zandi. It, it makes sense because it, it is a pretty good magic defense item to take. There are also decisions you look towards, and realistically, neither of them are going to be doing much healing. Therefore, what's the point? Go for the Adaptive Helm and try and deal with the damage that may well come flying through from Paris once he starts spamming those Qs after he's burst Zandi out. QSS has been finished up by Matty, so he is very aware that he has two members who are going to be looking for him in Candy Floss and Rifty. So he's going to be able to at least cleanse some of that. Got himself some armor pen as well, and he's slowly approaching that sixth and final item, which will be the, the Scimitar. Mercurius Scimitar, I forgot the name That's of it. That's the one. <laughs> Scimitar. But on the other side, and down in the bot lane, we actually see with the Baron minions. The side of Singularity looking for an opening, but Cesar actually goes forward, actually going to uh, deliver one back. It's Candy Floss who's under fire, throws out the ultimate, looking for the knockup, but now Singularity are forced to run. The damage coming out from Matty is absolutely huge at this point. Same with Paris, so Eminem are extremely scared of that. We are seeing Kerberos teleporting out on the back, but he does have teleport, remember. 
so he's going to be able to re-enter the fray at a moment's notice. He's actually walking towards top lane now. Yeah, they've got a slow push coming against him, so they've got to deal with that and get it pushing back the other way. Equally, this is an opportunity for Eminem. They've got two Infernals. Their team fight definitely isn't bad despite feeling like they're behind. If they can somehow pin down Paris, who's below half health here, they can win this fight. It's hard though, you've got to get through an Alice, you've got to get through a Zach, you've also got to get through the Scatter of the Week. Redemption's going to come out, so that's going to be a top off onto Eminem's health bar, but Kerberos is now in that top lane, and he is starting to slowly push it in. Baron buff is just about to time out, so Singularity have used it pretty effectively, and they've grown this gold league, which was equal before they did that Baron. Keeps on growing and growing and growing. Only 4,000 gold, so it's not an ins insurmountable loss for Eminem. But they've got to be feeling pretty nervous right now. They've played pretty well thus far, although they didn't really do the same job they did in game one of shutting Singularity out before they became an issue. And Paris is 2-1-1. One -on -one. He hasn't had the biggest impact in this game. He's been involved in very few of the game's kills, three in total compared to the 17 that, of course, have flown across. Quick math for you there. But he's got the Death Cap, he's got the Pen, he's got the Void Staff, Sork Shoes, Leandris, he's got everything he needs to make sure someone on that Eminem roster disappears from the Rift. Have you ever noticed Kerberos is a little bit shiny with that GA on? Don't start. <laughs> okay, I want to get you singing, I can't. Actually, I really don't for the no. sake of anyone watching. That's not. For anyone wondering what was happening, there's she was singing at me before we were on air. He was singing Moana. You've never seen Moana. You need to watch it. No, I do need to watch it. You don't understand. We'll get you there one day. But for now, there's one thing we need to get to, and it's the end of this game, and you feel it's pretty close. It's extremely close. We're at 40 minutes. One fight is enough to end this game. More than anything else, there's a 6-1-2 Tristana. There's a 5-3-3 Callista. Both have the capability to melt towers if they get a bit of free time on them. So Singularity, less so one fight. I mean, one fight is big for them. We're going to see the headbutt coming in, teleports coming out from Kerberos, so let's see what's going to happen. As Cesar is just interrupted by the Steadfast Presence. Candy Floss being topped up by the Monsoon, and Cesar can't enter the fray, but look at Energy. He's gone forward to the Valkyrie, splitting the team apart, but he's going to get pinned in place, and oh, Paris no. finds the kill. That's the flash out. It's a one for none in favor of Singularity. Kerberos on the other side. Could he find an opening? Actually, it looks like he might be oh, for a little bit of hurt right now. Look at the spears in him. Splat goes the weasel, but the Stun comes onto the back end of the fight, and that is going to be the end of the Poppy Shifter on the run, but he's going to stay alive. Matty and everyone just will not die. Another stun connects. Rifty trying to flash out as the reset hops come out as Matty finds the kill. The ace comes through for Singularity, and the base is going to be laid bare. And Singularity may have just found themselves winning this game out as well. Zandia was entirely off on his own by the side for Kerberos there. And I have to say, incredible ult by X Mati there. He gets an ult that sends Zandia flying away, unable to bring him down. Otherwise, that surely would have been the end of Mati. But fair play to Singularity. They've, un they've unsettled the champions of the ESL Premiership and find themselves going to the finals against XL. Our top two seeds are out of the running. It's the other two teams that will find themselves in this final. Third and fourth will be going in into finals and gods can bleed. The standing champions, Eminem, are out and Singularity turn it around in a reverse sweep here at the ESL Premiership and they are through to the finals.